Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Brittany and I am a part-time reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. So I have a reselling business online and then I also create YouTube videos about my business and my business adventures um, and tips and tricks to help you with your business as well. If you saw all of my last week's videos, I broke down my income from each of those three platforms that I sell on. Um, it was eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. So if you want to go and check out and know the nitty gritties of each platform, Platform, then I will have those linked in the description. You can go back and watch those and then come back here. But in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the totals, like the overview of how much I was able to bring in from reselling with a few extra statistics that might be helpful for you. And then I'm also going to delve into how much money I made on YouTube in November, since it kind of inadvertently relates to reselling as well, since I create videos about my reselling business. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit the like button subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and sit tight because we're about to jump into all the fun details. Okie dokie y'all, I'm going to scoot over a little bit um, so I can pull up the numbers while I talk about them. So in the month of November of 2020, I ended up listing 230 brand new items into my stores and I do 230 using a cross posting platform called Vindu. So I just upload it into Vindu and then I can go boom, boom, boom and send it over to all three platforms in one go. So 230 went to all three platforms. Um, that ended up breaking down to about 58 a week. So I listed 230 new items and then I relisted a bunch. I relisted 117 on eBay and I did the whole ending the listing and then sell similar and then relisting it in that way. So it got a whole new item ID. And then I relisted about 90 on Poshmark and then 15 on Mercari for a grand total of 222 relistings. Quick side note about relistings. My eBay and Poshmark ones were completed by my virtual assistant. And then I have to physically go in and do my Mercari ones because for whatever reason, my virtual assistant, since she's located in the Philippines, she does not have access to Mercari. So I don't know if that's a me thing or if it's something going on, I'm not sure. So if you have a VA and they can access your Mercari, could you leave me a comment down below? And maybe, maybe it's me, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But anyways, so 222 relistings and out of all three platforms, Mercari was the one to actually deliver on the relistings. So those are all of my new listings and relistings. I ended up selling 128 items, transactions, whatever you want to call it throughout the entire month of November. So based on what sold and versus how much I listed, I want to calculate like my immediate monthly sell through rate, but immediately for November, since I had 230 brand new listings and then I sold 128, my November sell through rate was 56%. And I calculate it this way. So that way I know kind of how much I should be sourcing. Cause I know roughly month after month, about 50% of what Whatever I end up listing equates to the amount of what sells. So if I list 200, I can typically sell about 100. Even though I might be listing new things, somebody might be interested in it, but it might be too expensive for them at the moment, but they might start perusing my closet and actually go and buy something that's older. So it's not always necessarily those immediate items, but typically that activity helps to yield about a 50% sell through rate for me. But I know not everybody calculates their sell through rate that way. They like to take into consideration their entire inventory and not just specifically what they listed in the month that they're talking about. So to calculate that, you would just go to whatever your inventory amount was at the beginning of the month. Mine was right about 500 across all platforms, so like to average it out at the beginning of November. So 500 plus my 230 new listings brought me to 730 and then I sold 128. And then so total, I would only have about an 18% sell through rate. However, I just don't calculate it that way because you know, we're constantly bringing in new stuff. I would look at it that way if I didn't bring in anything new, to be honest, and then try to like relist a bunch of stuff and sell through what I had. But because I'm constantly bringing in new stuff, I'm thinking like, okay, I need to basically bring in double what I want to sell for items. And then they'll eventually sell as well. And that number fluctuates depending on the month. But yeah, that's just where I'm at currently. I'm about a year and a half into my reselling business. So that's what I'm able to do. Hopefully I can get a higher sell through rate, you know, as time progresses, but we will see. So out of all of those numbers, 128 
that sold. My gross sale number, so all the money that it basically made, um, was $2,700 and seven cents, but basically $2,700. My cost of goods sold, so the amount that I spent on those items that did end up selling in the month of November ended up being $578.81. And if you've watched my past videos, I always take that number and then reinvest it the next month because it comes back to my bank account as, you know, earnings. But this is just the way that I do my business. I just completely um, reinvest that back into my business because that money has already been reinvested time and time and time and time and time again so and then finally for my fees and my shipping total across all three platforms was six hundred and forty eight dollars and forty cents and then that brings me to a net profit from reselling only one thousand four hundred and seventy two dollars and eighty six cents so this is my net profit this is before taxes um, I do save about twenty percent um, every single month for taxes that I'm gonna have to pay. You know, starting next year, I'm gonna have to pay quarterly since I'm like really into my business now, but I'm not a professional. Do not take my advice. This is just what I do and everybody's tax situation is different. So I would highly recommend you talk to your tax professional about what you should do for how much you should save, how much you should pay, all that fun stuff. So, so overall, comparing these numbers from October, I am down in sales by about 20%. From talking with my reseller friend, friends. Uh, it kind of seemed to be a common trend. Everybody seemed to kind of dip a little bit, um, especially for people that have been reselling for, you know, a year or more. Um, they could kind of gauge it based on their last year. That might have been for numerous reasons. Maybe the fact that there is a pandemic, maybe because there was an election, maybe because something with the stock market, who knows. Um, but that is just what happened. And that is something that you need to be aware of if you decide to go into reselling is that you can, you know, kind of expect what you could make, but you're never going to be for certain because you just never really know what's going to happen. And, and that's kind of something that we've all learned this year is just to expect the unexpected. So, so those are my numbers that I got from reselling and I do for reselling only, I do dedicate about 20 hours a week. Um, and then my other 20 hours goes to YouTube. So before I talk about my business expenses, I want to delve more into my additional income streams, um, which primarily YouTube, which is what you're watching this on. So anyways, I'm going to talk about my YouTube and then my additional income streams and then talk about them quickly. And then at the end of this video, you're going to want to stick around. If you want to be nosy about YouTube a little bit more, I'm going to go over to a screen share and share with you some of my YouTube analytics, like full transparency. So, so anyways, if you're curious more about YouTube analytics, stick till the end and I will jump into all of my fun little statistics there. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into my additional income streams and then we will go into business expenses. All right, so my additional income streams, um, we'll just go ahead and put reselling back at the top. Um, it was $1472.86 from reselling. And then from YouTube, so YouTube was my second highest income stream. Is It's YouTube, but it's Google AdSense. So basically I get paid from people watching ads on my videos. Um, so from the month of November, that was my first full month having ads on my videos. And I ended up making $390.78, which is pretty good for my first month, I think, especially with the size of my channel. Just a little caveat, I just got paid this. So whatever the full amount, you get paid monthly with, with YouTube. And then the paycheck comes anywhere from like the 15th through like the 22nd, the following month, depending on your bank. It's about a month delayed when it comes to your YouTube paycheck. Um, my next highest income stream came from my spreadsheet. So I offer an inventory sales and expenses spreadsheet like an all-in-one over on Etsy. I just charged three dollars for it because it's very simple. It's to the point. That's just the kind of philosophy that I have in life is kind of essential, minimal, get the job done, cool. So anyways, I offer that. Links of course will be in the description if you are interested in it just to save you some time from going through all the hassle of creating your base template. But from Etsy, I ended up making $116.84 after uh, fees were taken out. And then my next highest income stream came from Amazon affiliate. So basically all the links that I have in my description can sometimes be where I'm referring you to the product and then I might get a kickback for that. So with Amazon, um, it's called Amazon affiliate. 
affiliates and I do have a disclaimer in all of my descriptions that if you do purchase from that link I'm referring you to the product and Amazon will see that and then they'll give me a portion of the sale. So it can range anywhere from like two to 5% typically, whatever it is. So it's not a whole lot, but it is something and it does help. So in the month of November, I actually got paid from September. So with Amazon and most affiliate marketing, you're, you're kind of delayed a few months. So what I got paid in November was from September. So I got $31.45 and then I actually ended up doubling that in the month of November, but I won't see that till January. Does that make sense? And last for now, um, highest in income stream, not really high, but <laughs> next income that I got for November was from Vindu. So I um, have an affiliate link with Vindu and if you sign up through it, then you get 25% off your first month and then I get a kickback for that. And for November, what I got paid, I got actually paid from August and September. <laughs> because August was like only like a dollar or two and then September you have to have at least ten dollars anyways I got a whole whopping thirteen dollars and fifteen cents for referring you guys and helping you save a little bit of money on your first month um, I genuinely love them so I'm so glad that they do have an affiliate program because I would still be promoting them if they weren't <laughs> affiliates so it's nice that I you know do get a kickback because I genuinely enjoy um, their service so um, and then I also have a few other affiliate marketings, but I won't get paid until January. I made it in November, but I won't get paid till January. So I'm going to save that for January. So uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that one. <laughs> All right. So that is it for my income streams for the month of November of 2020. So that brings me to a grand total of $2,025.08 which is really good. I'm um, very happy about that. But in the month of November, I'm gonna share with you what I had to spend on my business, which, you know, business expenses are tax deductible. So make sure you're keeping up with these kind of numbers. Business expenses are deductible. So going into my business expenses, because I'm sure you're just curious about it, like I was curious about it um, in the beginning. In the month of November, I ended up spending, for the most, was $272.01 for my virtual assistant on um, Upwork. My next business expense was for my eBay store and it was $59.95 and that is for their 1000 fixed price listing store subscription. Don't forget before the end of the month if you do have that one or any store subscription for that matter I think I think it's all. Um, you will get some sort of subscriber discount towards shipping supplies. For the 1000 one, it's $50 for the quarter. So if you haven't used it already, make sure you do. You can go and get some free you know, poly mailers. I got like 200 of the big ones. I don't know. The next business expense was on Vendu and I did have to increase it to be able to get what I needed to get done. Um, so for Vendu, it was $61.98 because I needed to get, I think it's like 600 listings for that. And if you don't end up using them all, just create your drafts. Like just go in there, boom, 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 boom. Create all your drafts and save them for when you do need them. Um, and then of course, you can edit your, you can downgrade or upgrade at any time. Um, the next regarding business expenses, since we're kind of including YouTube in this, then I also paid $15.99 for my Adobe Premiere Pro subscription, and that is my video editing software. And then I also paid $9 for TubeBuddy, which is my YouTube search engine optimization Chrome extension. If you're curious about what it is and how to use it and how it can make your YouTube videos, you know, get a little bit more traction, I did do a live on it and I'll have that linked in the description below. Those were all of my business expenses for November and that totaled to $418.93. So taking my total income minus my expenses, I am left with from reselling in YouTube $1,606.15 for November, which is still lower than October because my sales were down 20% and reselling is the majority of the income that I'm making right now but um, things can change in the next month or two or a year even. Thank you guys for sticking through this portion. Like I promised, we are gonna go ahead and jump into some YouTube analytics for all of you that are interested in <laughs> knowing all the ins and outs and just fun little things about YouTube. Um, so we are gonna hop over to my computer. Um, before we do that, make sure you hit the like button if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it, thank you. On to the YouTube analytics. 
So for, I already went ahead and went into my YouTube studio and I went to my analytics and then I came up here and sorted by the month. I went ahead and clicked November. When you initially click on your analytics and go to your month, you will be able to see how many views you got, your watch hours, your subscribers, and your estimated revenue. So this was the first full month that I did receive revenue on YouTube. My views, I ended up getting 24,000 in the month of November and then 4.2 thousand watch hours. And I did end up getting 1.4 thousand subscribers because um, my friend Josh had me on his channel. His channel is Harry Tornado. So if you guys haven't checked out that video, go ahead and check it out. I'll have that linked in the description as well. Um, we just kind of did an interview and chit chatted about YouTube and reselling and all the fun things. Um, but his channel is just a little bit bigger than mine. Um, and then so many people were so sweet and came over to um, subscribe to me. So if that was you, thank you so much. I sure do appreciate you being here um, and watching my videos. Anyways, 1.4 thousand, you can see when the live um, happened. And then I ended up getting $390.78. So let's see, views are kind of, I think I averaged about whatever, 500 to 600 views a day. And then once me and Josh did do that live, um, of course I got a surge in views and in watch hours and subscribers. So of course that surged up. So now I'm actually averaging closer to about a thousand views a day. Uh, which has carried on into December as well. Um, let's see, my average subscribers before I got my big surge was, I was averaging about, I would say that I was averaging about 10-ish a day. And then um, the first day that the live aired, I got 393 subscribers um, from Josh's channel, I would assume. I mean, I probably got some naturally on my own too, but the next day I got 330. And then the next day, 98, 66, 43, 51, 42, um, and so on and so forth. And that kind of trend down here has been continuing on my channel. Um, I have been getting about anywhere from like 20 to 30, I would say on average subscribers a day, which is really cool. In the month of November, my most popular video ended up being my thrift with me and ended up bringing me in 3000 views. And my average view duration was only 10 minutes, which is 22%, so not very long. The next one is my most popular video, my how to take pictures, and that brought me in 3000 views. And then my thrift haul at 1800, Dymo versus printer, 1600, and then another thrift haul at 1300. Ad revenue ended up being $390.78. And then we're gonna jump into that a little bit more. We'll go ahead and jump over here to revenue. So my CPM ended up being 26.59. And this is basically the amount that advertisers pay per thousand monetized playback. So every time that people watch some substantial portion of an ad and um, it gets played back, I think is how, you know, I'm not a professional with YouTube yet, but that's basically how it goes down. However, this number, 55% comes to the creator and then 45% goes to YouTube. So, you know, what you see as a CPM doesn't have anything to do with actually what you make. That is what your RPM is. And RPM just means revenue per basically 1,000 views. So for me, it ended up being 1629 in the month of November, which is pretty good um, because I am a business channel. Um, I think the more that I am on YouTube, that RPM will increase a little bit more once they solidify and know that I am a business channel. You know, when you're talking about business, money, or finance, advertisers are going to pay the most to be put on to have their ads on your videos versus somebody that might be doing like a cooking channel or just it like a vlogging channel um, they will typically see a lower rpm so 1629 is roughly how much i expect per 1000 views on my channel or at least in november well right now as of the 21st today which the video will go out um, in october for 10 days that i was monetized i ended up making 129.58 November was the 3978 and then as of the 21st of December I have made 365.42 for ad revenue in December. So I still have um, about 10 more days so I actually might surpass 500 which will be super exciting. Um, my top earning videos, this is really interesting. Um, the video that brought in the most money was the one that is consistently bringing me in a ton of views that I put out like I think it's like my fourth or fifth video was how to take pictures and then my second one was my thrift with me 
It brought me in $31, whereas the other one brought me in $46. My live brought me in $30, but that's also because I had, um, it's kind of like a tip jar, I guess, when you have super chats or super stickers. When you're doing a live, somebody can just, you know, write a comment and for their comment to like be brought up in a bright color or something, then they can leave some money as well. So that's why that one's so much higher. Um, and then the next one was my Dymo versus printer that brought in $28. And then my eBay 101 got $26.82. This is really interesting too. So my ad revenue, most of it came from ads and I have all of my ads on, I do. So I just do skippable ads, display ads, bumper ads, non-skippable. But the majority of my ad revenue comes from the ads that can be skipped. Um, and that is because, you know, something will be more interesting and somebody will wanna keep watching past the point of it being skipped. So what I, my understanding is, is that you do end up getting paid a little bit more um, the longer somebody watches an ad, but I don't know that for certain, so I can't really say. But this is everything that I know, is that the majority of my income comes from skippable video ads, so 85% of that. So that's where this 352 comes from. My transaction revenue was from Super Chats, and that was $28.98. And then um, if you have YouTube Premium, where you basically don't pay for ads, but you pay for like a YouTube monthly subscription, I still get a cut from that as well. Um, and then from that, it was $8.83, which is really fun. Oh, and then down here, it breaks down my transaction revenue. So I ended up getting $21.98 from Super Chats, which is really sweet, and then $7 from Super Stickers. And those you can happen during premieres or lives. Going into a little bit more of my analytics, my audience. So I ended up having 12,000 unique viewers. On average, most of my viewers watch my videos at least twice which kind of makes sense to me because my videos can be a little bit longer and they might be in the middle of something. So they might pause it at 10 minutes, get their dinner done, their dishes or whatever, and then come back to watch it. And then that's like counts as two views per person. Like I said earlier, um, I was up by about 1400 subscribers. And this is interesting. This just kind of tells you how, like when most of your viewers are on YouTube. Um, so most of them are about anywhere from like 6 to 8 p.m. most days for me. Engagement, um, let's see, for about every view that I get, people typically will watch about 10 minutes. So my reach for my analytics. So the impressions are how many times a video pops up through somebody's recommended screen and they might just scroll by it. I had 279,000 impressions um, and then 33.6% of my views it did end up coming from YouTube recommending my comment, which is really interesting. Um, my click-through rate is, I guess, down from October, which means for every impression that's shown, how many times is somebody like, ooh, I wanna click on that, and that's down. It's only 5%, which I don't think is, <laughs> is very good. So that tells me that in November, like my thumbnails and my titles really weren't the best, so I kinda need to work on that. My views were up and my unique viewers were up, um, which is pretty good. This is also really interesting, is knowing where your traffic is coming from. For me, browse features, this is from like people's homepage, so they're subscribed to me, their subscription feed. 26% of my views come from there. Um, and then 23%, which is a very near close second, comes from YouTube suggesting my videos. So I am popping up on the side. You might be watching a video, but then I'm up on the side for something that YouTube is like, hey, they probably want to watch this next too. They could find some value in it. So, you know, that comes from you guys liking my videos and commenting and engaging with me since I'm engaging back. So thank you guys. And then about 22% comes from search. So I'm kind of about even across the board. Like I have my subscribers, I have YouTube recommending me and I'm coming up in search. You know, none of these are super profound, but I am at least dabbling in a little bit and I know that I'm doing something right because at least the majority of my views are coming from things that I need them to come from. And yeah, those are kind of like my analytics for the month of November of 2020. It was very interesting. It was definitely a very good month and uh, I'm excited to see to kind of document this stuff so I can see where I start and see where I am in in three months, in six months, nine months, 12 months, whatever it may be. Um, just because I think numbers are interesting. So that is where I was at for November. Um, just a few quick little fun new things as well. If you are curious about a video um, and how well it performs, let me find one from from November. Let's see, I'm gonna go to my my thrift with me. That one did very well in November. It came out at the end of October, but it did very well in November. If you're curious about 
this video in particular, you can always come to your content and come to your videos and then scroll over to this little graph bar and you can click the analytics for this video and it'll show me, well, this is from when it got published, but I can come over here and go to November. In the month of November, this one video, my thrift with me at the bins, got me 53 new subscribers and it'll show you when they come too. Um, and then I actually made $31.15 from this video alone in the month of November, which is quite a bit. I, I mean, for me right now. So this is just a fun little tip um, for you to go through your videos and see what has brought you in the most subscribers or watch hours and maybe tailor your next videos to those types of videos, like put out more content that people like to watch and is performing well for you. That is all I'm gonna go through with my YouTube analytics. So let's just come back, come back over and then I'll close out the video. All right, you guys, so that is it for my November 2020 reselling and YouTube sale and analytic report wrap up. If you guys did enjoy this and you found some value out of it, make sure you hit the like button because it really does help my channel. And then also leave a comment down below of what you found the most interesting statistic or fun fact to be. I would just be curious about um, your thoughts on anything really. But that is it for today's video guys. Thank you so much for watching and if you're not subscribed already make sure you do while you are on your way out and turn on that bell notification so you never miss one of my future uploads. But that is it you guys. Thank you so much and I will catch you in my next one. All right happy holidays. Bye.